So uh, basically, I'm recording this. I'll make it available on TikTok. If you are not on TikTok already, make sure you are following me on TikTok. I'll make it available on YouTube as well. All right. So if you are looking at the video, the recorded video after now, um, you know, links to whatever exchange I'm going to mention here will be in the video description. And if you see this on TikTok, okay, the link will probably be on my bio. So you can go to my bio and create an account with any of the exchange that I'm going to mention during this trading. All right, so this is my phone screen, and I believe you can see that. All right, so here I am on the Bybit exchange. So if you want to trade features on Bybit, all you just need to do is to click on this option here, the middle button down there that says derivative, right? So once you click on it, now this is the interface of the features trading, right? On Bybit here, the slight difference that you will see here are, you know, based on these tabs you see at the top here, all right? based on those tabs you see at the top here. So once we come to the derivatives trading on Bybit, we have USDT perpetual contract, we have USDC contract, then we have the inverse um, option, inverse trading, and then we have option trading, okay? This is what you want to pay attention to. If I go to exchanges like uh, the Mexi exchange, all right, you don't have all of those different options. On max here, if I just come to features, okay, so, sorry, if I come to the option that says features, here you only have USDT M features and then you have coin M features. Now, this, the, the difference between these two is if I'm going to be trading the, with the USDT M features option, it means that I need to have what? USDT. And what is USDT? USDT is a stable coin in this space. Stable coins are, you know, crypto assets that are pegged to the dollar. Just as the name implies, they are stable. The fluctuation, the volatility in the market doesn't affect it. So if you have $5,000 in your account today, that $5,000 will remain $5,000. Even if BTC decides to go to $1,000 today, your $5,000, in as much as it's in a stable coin, it will remain that $5,000, right? So if for you to be able to trade USDT and features, it means that you need to have what? USDT. Then... If you want to trade coin M features, it means that you need to have that particular coin that you want to be trading. So if I come in here to the coin M features and I want to select any of these, but one thing you should note is that here it is quoted in dollar. Since it is quoted in, in dollar, you don't need the dollar. What you need is what? The coin itself. That is why it is called coin M features. So if I'm going to be trading BTC, it means that I need to have BTC, right? It is BTC that I will use to stake. And if the price of BTC, whatever prediction that I'm giving goes right, I will be paid back in BTC. So if I enter a, a position now with one BTC, okay, and then I make a profit of, uh, let's say, 50% uh, or there, but it means that if that position is closed, I'll be having 1.5 BTC and all of that, all right? But that is when you want to, so any of these coins that are listed there, ADA, SRP, all of them, it means that you need to be having that coin to be able to trade with the coin M features. But if you are going to be choosing the USDT M um, features, you need to have USDT, okay? So the first thing as a beginner is to sign off an account with any of these exchange and then make a deposit of USDT into your account. There are two ways you can make deposit, okay, into your account. If I go back to the Bybit exchange, all right, and I come back to the home page, there are two ways you can make deposit. You can make deposit using the P2P trading option, or you can make deposit from another crypto wallet into your exchange, all right? So once you make deposit into your account, then the next thing is to come in here to the features trading option. And just like I showed you on the Mercy exchange here, we are going to focus on what? On USDT because it's USDT we have, all right? USDT and USDC, okay, are the most popular stable coin out there. And it is what most of these exchanges use. Okay, but USDT is the like, so you need USDT, whatever you want it to. So you make sure that you are on the what? USDT perpetual option on the buy bid exchange. Okay, then if you want to use the USDC contract, all right, once you come in here to the, if I go to the trade option, you see that buy bid is setting a notice here that for you to trade the USDC contract, you need a buy bid unified trading account. Okay. Uh, we don't want to go into here. This is for advanced traders and all of that. But let's just focus on the USDT perpetual, okay? And then if you want to trade the coin M feature that I just showed you on this other option, you need to go to the inverse what? Inverse trading on the Bybit estate. So here on Bybit, you see it as inverse trading option. And then if you want to trade the tokens that are equally like features, the standard features, 
is equally on the inverse option. Okay, so here you see BTC, USDT, and once you see here, it says what available balance is quoted in BTC. So it means that I need to have BTC to be able to trade here, right? But if I go back to the USDT perpetual contract, all right, it will tell you here that the available balance is what in USDT. So it means that I need to have USDT to be able to trade on this particular option. OK, so whenever you come in here, you want to make sure that you focus on the USDT perpetual. And here you will see a countdown for funding rate. OK, look at this. It tells you funding rate countdown. So the funding rate for this particular token we are looking at is 0.0100%. And this will happen in the next four hours or thereabout. OK, that is very funding rate. So it, since it's positive, if it is negative, you will see it minus in front. OK. But since it's positive right now, if I'm holding a long position, I will be, be I will be the one paying, you know, uh, the short position holders and all of that. If it is negative, short position will be the one paying me and all of that. All right. So when you come in here, the first thing you want to do for your official trading account, once you come into your Bybit account, you want to go to this option here, this three dot here, okay, and set what you want. Okay, there are certain preferences that you want. If I go and click on that option there. You see all of these different options and the rest, but what you want to focus on, you know, the calculator too and the rest. I've made videos on this equally very important. Okay, you will use it to calculate, you know, where it will cost you, where you will get liquidated and all of that. I don't want to go into that today. Okay, but basically the first thing you need to do is to come to where it says, uh, you know, trading preferences. Okay, so click on the trading preferences option, and here, all right, here you have you know uh the position mode by default it will be on one way mode one way mode is that if i open a long position on btc right now i will not be able to open a short position at the same time until i close that long position okay that is one way mode if you want to be edging the market by trading both sides you need to change that from one way to what to edge mode okay you need to change it from one way to what to edge mode all right that way, you'll be able to trade any asset of your choice both ways whenever you want. So if I switch to the edge mode, I'll just say apply to all USDT, you know, pairs. So I just click that and I click OK. And it tells me edge mode will be applied. Yes, go ahead and click on OK. And that is it. OK, so I am now on the edge mode. If I want to open both long and short position at the same time, I can equally do that right now because I've changed that. OK. And then every other thing, just leave it as default, okay? Leave it, if you want to, you can just, you know, walk around and see what you can do, okay? If you want the confirmation windows, whenever you open a position, you get a confirmation before you, you know, go ahead and open, which is very important. Go ahead and check all the confirmations that you want to get and all of that. So, yeah, once you do that, the next thing now is, if, for instance, you want to trade BTC, okay? Or any coin at all you want to trade, what do you do? You click on this option here to search for the coin. Now, before we go there, at the top here, you see that we have the chart option and then we'll have the trade option. So the chart option, if I'm on the chart option, this is where you do all of your analysis. Okay, currently I'm looking at H bar on the daily time frame. All right. So H bar is currently towards this, you know, um, support level here. So if I want to buy, I will say, okay, I'm going to buy here, hoping that this will come up here and all of that. All right. So if you have done with this, you now go to the trade option. When you go to the trade option, the next thing you want to do is to select that coin that you want to trade, okay? Uh, so if I go ahead and say, let's trade BTC, I'll go ahead and type in here BTC. Now, when I type BTC, you see a whole lot of pair here coming up, okay? So the first one here is BTC USDT. This goes with any token at all you want to trade. The first one here is BTC USDT. So since you are going to be trading USDT con uh, perpetual contract, it is that first one that you will choose, okay? For instance, if I click on that one now, okay? Okay, this takes me to the USDT contract, all right? It takes me to the USDC contract, which I need a unified trading account. Any perpetual, anyone that is, you see BTC perpetual or like that perpetual or whatever, it means that you need to be trading that using a unified trading account on the buy bill exchange, okay? Then if I go back and I type BTC again, if I type BTC again, the one that will take you to the inverse trading option is this one. These are the standard futures trading. You see that there is a number attached to it, right? So the number attached to it is that, that's 0929. So what it is simply saying is that the expiration date for this BTC USD trade will be on the 29th of September. 
All right. This number you see here is the expiration date. This is fish standard. Okay. This is the one I say that is standard futures trading. This is not the one we are going to trade. So if I click on that one now, this one that has a date attached to it, you see that automatically Bybit, you know, takes me to the inverse trading option, right? So we are on the inverse trading option. And then here it tells you that this, the expiration date is what? In 27 days. So here you are not seeing funding rate countdown, but you are seeing the expiration date. So you don't pay funding rate here, but at the end of the expiration date, this is going to automatically close whether you're in profit or not. All right. So this is a standard futures trading, but the one we want to always focus on, as I said earlier, is the USDT perpetual. All right. So if I go back there again and then we want to trade BTC or like that or SRP, any token you want to trade, you just type in your BTC. All right. And you want to always make sure that you are selecting the BTC USDT pair. Okay. BTC USDT pair, not BTC USD with the numbers, not BTC USD itself, not BTC Perpetua, but BTC what USDT pair, because we are going to be trading with our balance of what USDT. So you select that one. Once you select that one, the next thing is to select your margin mode. By default, mine is on 10x leverage and on cross margin. Okay. When I trade with cross margin, all right. When I trade with cross margin and I don't apply proper risk management, I don't put stop losses. If for any reason I get liquidated, what happens? I will lose the whole of this money that I have here on the futures trading account, not the money you have on your buy bill account because there are other wallets like your spot wallet, your funding wallet, you have money there. Okay. So I will lose the whole money I have on my futures trading account. That is when you are trading with what? With cross margin. Okay. So if I go ahead and click on that option there, you see that here we have what? Isolated and then we have cross. So on isolated, if I decide to enter a position with $10 and I don't put stop loss, if I get liquidated, I will only lose that $10. But on cross, if I decide to enter a position with $10, okay, and I don't put stop loss, when I get liquidated, I will lose the whole balance on my futures trading account. All right, so those are the difference. So it is always advisable that you use what? Isolated. Now, the way this affects you is that if I open a position with cross margin, okay, it will push my liquidation price further, right? If, for instance, I was supposed to be liquidated when BTC gets to 27, maybe I'm opening a short position right now. If I'm supposed to be liquidated when BTC gets to 27 using the isolated mode, once I'm using cross, because it's using the whole of my balance on my futures trading account, my liquidation will be at, let's say, 30,000. Okay, and then when, when your liquidation is that far, it will be tempting you not to put stop loss. And when you miss the money, when you get liquidated, you will lose the whole money. So always use what cross margin. And then on the Bybit exchange, you can go from as low as 2x leverage, okay, to as high as 100x leverage. Okay, so you are at liberty to use whatever leverage you use or you want. Okay, so the higher the leverage, the higher the risk and all of that. All right, so you select the leverage that you want. If it is 5x, just drag this, okay? If it is 10x, just drag it until you get the number of leverage you want. You go ahead and click on confirm or save, okay? I've not made any changes there. That's why it's complaining. So you go ahead and click on save. Now, talking about leverage, okay? Before we go for that, let's talk about leverage, okay? When we talk about leverage, we talk about 2x, we talk about 3x, we talk about 4x. The X there simply means the number of time you are going to multiply your account, okay? Uh, number of time. The way leverage simply work in futures or perpetual contract trading is this. If I want to use like a 100X leverage, all right? It means that if I'm going to trade BTC USDT, normally without leverage, if I want to buy one USDT right now, I will buy it at what? 25,800 without leverage. If I want to buy one USDT right now, I'll buy it at 25,800. But if I'm using a leverage of 10X, okay, I'll be buying this BTC less than this amount because what I am using leverage, I'm using borrowed funds, okay? I'll buy it lesser than this amount. Let's say I want to buy one BTC right now. So I'll go ahead and put one BTC down there, all right? So when I put, you can zoom on your screen to see this. Let's say I want to buy one BTC right now, this current price, and I'm buying one BTC. All right, with a 10x leverage, instead of costing me 28,000 or 25,800, it will cost me how much? $2,000 to buy that. 
all right? It will cost me $2,000, as you can see here. This is the cost of what it will cost me to buy one USD, one BTC. Why is that? Because I am using a leverage of 10X. Now, if I go back and change that leverage to, you know, let's say we'll change it to 2X, change this one to what? 2X, and then click on save. And then I come back here, I want to buy one BTC. Look at how much it's going to cost me. That is $12,000. It means that I need to have $12,000 to be able to open a position worth what? One BTC. So the effect of leverage is that it gives you opportunity to buy more token at what? A discounted, not a discounted, at a lower price, okay? At a lower price because the exchange is paying the half of the money, right? Now, the way it now works is that because you are using leverage, you'll be making more percent, quicker percentage than when trading on the spot market, okay? So if I, I trade on the spot market, like buy BTC without leverage at 28,500, okay? If BTC moves by 1%, how much would be my profit for 28,500? If it moves by 1%, it means that I'm making 1% of 25,800, okay? If it moves by 1%, it means that I'm making um, 1% of what? 25,800. Let's try if that 1S leverage will work. Okay, yes, 1S leverage work, 1S leverage work. Okay, so if I click on that, this time around, I'm not using any leverage. And I want to buy one BTC, I'm going to pay the exact amount of what it's going to cost me to buy one BTC. Now, if I go ahead and click on this take profit stop loss option, all right? And I said, if BTC moves by 1%, if I go ahead and type 1% here, if BTC moves by 1%, I'm making a profit of what? of 1%, which is around that 258. So 1% is 258, which is 1% of what? That $28,000, right? So, uh, sorry, $25,800, right? Now, when I now use 10X leverage, okay? When I now use 10X leverage, so it will now mean that I am going to be, you know, buying BTC lesser, okay? Let's say we save that. I'm going to be buying one BTC at a lesser amount. So it means that I just need, instead of having up to 25,800, I just need what? Just $2,000, 2,600, right? $2,600 to be able to buy BTC right now. Now, when I buy BTC right now, what happened? Remember, I just need only 2,000. It doesn't mean that if this move by 1%, I'm going to be making 1% of 28,000, no. Because I am using a 10 s leverage, I'll be making 1% of what? Of two thousand dollars okay but because i'm using leverage it will be faster if it would, would have taken btc let's say one percent move i don't know if you notice that when i use one next level one percent move will mean that let me go back again so one percent move if i go to that tp again one percent move will mean that btc will need to move from what 28 25 um um, 800 to what to around 26,000, right? That is 1% move without leverage, okay? 1% move will mean that BTC will need to move from 25,800 to 26,075 um, $26, dollars. That is 1% move. But when I use leverage, I don't need to wait until BTC get to 26,000 before I can make 1% in the market, all right? So when I go back now and change, uh, you know, change that leverage to 10x. So that you see the difference. I'm trying to, for you to understand what how leverage works here, okay? So if I go back here and change this, okay, I made it 11 next, but it's still the same, right? So right now, if I open one BTC, it will cost me just around $2,000 to open one BTC. Now, if I go ahead and say, let me take profit when this market moves by 1%, okay? Remember that without leverage, BTC needs to move toward, toward, to 26,000 before I can get 1%. But because I'm using 11x leverage, 1% move will just be at 28,000, 25,838. Okay? 25,838, that is 1%. So, and then what that simply means is that I'm going to be making 1% of what? Of the $2,000 that I'm staking in this trade. All right? Then if it moves by 10%, okay? If I go ahead and put in there 10% there. All right? So you see that, here, because I'm using what? 11S leverage. So BTC, once it moves to 26,000, not even, remember we did not use leverage. It has to move to $26,075. But here, 10S, 10% 10 will be that BTC has to move to $26,400. That is $49. All 
all right that will be 10 percent. so this time around you're making 10 percent profit of what of what you have here of whatever this is going to cost you so if it is two thousand dollars you're making 10 percent of that if it is three thousand dollars you're making 10 percent of that so leverage the way the profit for leverage is calculated is always based on the available margin that you are going to open a trade with okay so it's always based on the available margin that you are going to be opening a trade with all right that is how leverage works so if it costs you 100 dollars to open a position and you make 10 percent of that so the leverage now will now make you make faster percentage okay so if from here one percent will be that btc need to move to 26,000. before btc gets to 26,000, you would have been making like 10 percent 20 percent already depending on the leverage the higher the leverage okay the closer you can get to your target if i want to make 100 percent maybe when btc moves by just 25 you know uh let's say we'll go ahead and change this to 100x leverage and i change this to 100x leverage okay once i say okay i'm going to be making like uh so if i come in here and say i want to make uh uh so from the current price right now okay from the current price of 25 800 if BTC moves up to 26 times, and I'm already making 100 percent, right? If BTC moves up to 26 times, I'm already making 100 percent. Why is that? Normally, this would have been just one percent move, right? But because you are using 100 x leverage, you are now making 100 times the amount of money that you are staking. Okay, so that is basically how leverage works. And then remember that if this goes against you, what happens? If this goes against you by minus one percent, you are equally going to lose your money completely which is why you must always use a very low leverage when you are just starting, okay? At least for a start, use a very low leverage. When you get used to the platform, you can now start increasing your leverage, okay? You can start future trading with as little as $2, as little as $5, as little as $10 and all of that, but use a very low leverage to start with. This is where risk management starts from, okay? So after selecting the cross, uh, the margin mode, either cross or isolated, you select the leverage you want to use. Remember, the leverage is the amount of money you want to you want to uh, like actually borrow from the exchange. Okay. So if I have hundred dollars and I'm using ten x leverage, it means that I can open a position. If I go ahead and say or oh, open this, use hundred percent here, it means that I can actually open a position worth what a thousand two hundred dollars. With just one hundred and twenty-five dollars, okay. If it wasn't worth a thousand, normally I would have needed a thousand two hundred dollars to open if this amount of to buy this amount of uh, BTC, right? Normally I needed that to open this amount of BTC, but right now because I'm using tenors leverage, I just need only one twenty-five to open that position, okay? So after that, this next thing here is you need something you need to understand here is where you have your other types, okay? The other types, the two other types that you need to understand is the limit order and the market order. Very important. If you are going to be trading signals and the signals say enter with market order, just come in here and change to market order. Whether they say enter with current market price or enter with CMP or enter whatever, you come in here and change this one to market price. But when they give you entering price, all you need to do is to use what? Limit order. So you select limit order when you are given entering price. That one will now allow you to type in the amount, the entry, or the entry price they are giving you here. Okay. So if I want to buy BTC when it gets down to 24,000, I can go ahead and type in 24,000 here. All right. So, sorry, 24,000, not 20. So I just type in 24,000 here. All right. If I want to buy when it gets to 23,000, I can type that. That is when you are using limit order. You can determine when you want to add your own price. But for market order, it will be executed immediately. It means that your uh, position will be executed immediately. Now, for limit order, okay, for limit order, the price, the buying price must always be lower than the current market price. If I go ahead and say I want to buy BTC at 29,000, when the current price is at 25,000, it will automatically be executed with the market order for me. It will not be a pending order. It will automatically be executed with the market order for me. And what is the reason for that? The exchange is saying no. Currently, the market is, price is at 25,000. You cannot wait until it gets to 29,000. You'll be losing. So it's better we'll buy now for you so that when it gets to 29,000, you'll be taking profit. So the, for limit order, the market price must always be lower than when you are buying. 
the market price will always be lower than the current market price. And then when you are selling, the market price must always be higher than the current market price. If I decide to go short right now, okay, and I say that I want to sell BTC when the price gets to $24,000, the exchange will tell you no. If it gets to $24,000, dollars you will be losing. So why not we sell for the current market price right now? So for selling, the, mark, the, the price you are going to put for limit order, the price you put here when you are selling must always be what? Higher than what? The current market price. And then for buying, the a price you are going to put here must always be what? Lower than the current market price. If you put for buying a price that is higher than the current market price, it will be executed immediately. And then if you put for selling the price that is lower than the current market price, it will equally be executed immediately. So those are what you need to understand. Then if you want to use prices that are higher than, okay, when you are buying, if you want to use a price that is higher than the current market price, you need to change from limit to this one that we call conditional order, okay? And all of that. I don't want to go into this so that I don't get too confused, but just understand limit order and market order. Those are the two orders that you need to understand first, all right? So if the signal say enter with current market price, you just change to market. And then if it says this is your entering price, you just change to what to what limit, all right? Then when you are using limit, it gives you the option to type in the price you want to enter at, all right? And then you can now use this slider here to select the amount of money you want to risk. So since I have $100 here, if I'm going to use 10% of that, I will just use this slider. As I'm sliding, you see that at the top there is 25% in yellow, right? If I slide there, it tells you 40%, 50%. If you take it to the end there, it tells you 100%. So it means that you are going to use the whole of your capital. But right here, it tells you 10%. It means I'm going to use 10% of my capital. And down here, you will see how much that will cost you. So if I'm going to open this position, it will cost me like $12, okay, to open that position. Once I'm done, remember, if it is a buy, I just click on the open long option, okay? So I go ahead and click on open long, and then the confirmation box will appear. So here, you can equally verify the trade you are going to take, okay? You are entering at this price. You are entering with, you know, uh, all of this. It tells you the amount, the quantity to cost you. You are doing cross margin with the 10x leverage, okay? You set your take profit to be here, and then you have uh, uh, the take profit stop loss. It will be on market order and all of that. So then estimated liquidation price, it tells you zero here, okay? Why is it telling me zero? Because I am using just $10. And I'm using cross margin, right? Cross margin. I'm using just ten dollars out of my twenty-five, one twenty-five, and I'm using cross margin. So the estimated liquidation price is not showing, all right? And some persons will be tempted by this by saying, "No, I don't need to put stop loss, and I'll put this stay in the market for as long as I want." Now, if I go back and change this to to isolated, okay. Once I change to isolated, all right, and I come back again, the same, uh, you know, stuff I put here, and I open. A long position it tells you that you'll be liquidated at where 21,000. So if the price goes down to 21,000, you'll be liquidated. Okay, if the price goes down to 21,000, you'll be what you'll be liquidated and all of that. And if I decide to increase by using 50% of my capital, for instance, and I go ahead and open a long position, it will still be the same thing, right? But if I go back to cross margin again, okay, if I go back to cross margin again. And I decide to do what? To open this position right now with 50%. Okay, remember initially I do 10%. There was no liquidation price. Now, if I decide to do with 50%, there will be what? Liquidation price, right? Because the money that is left now to hold that margin is like half of this position that I'm entering this with. Okay, so I'm going to use $60 and I only have around $60 or $75 to hold this position with, which is why you're seeing liquidation price here. All right, if you are comfortable with that and all of that, you go ahead and click on confirm. And once you click on confirm, your order will be placed there. Now it will be on the pending order stock. It has not been triggered yet. So even if I cancel this thing, this trade, I will not be charged anything. I'm not paying any fee. I'm not losing anything. It will be pending until where BTC gets to what? To 24,000. That is when it can only be triggered. Now, if you enter with market order immediately, you'll see it showing up here on position, okay? You see it showing up here on position. So if I go to position here, you'll see whatever trade you have taken showing up here. All right. And all of that. I don't know if BTC will go up. 
Maybe I'll just do a market order right now, show you how that goes, all right? So pending order with limit order will be here. Once it gets to your price, it will be triggered, and then you take that trade, and that's it. Then let me do market order right now. So uh, I'll go ahead and do a 10%. Let me just do, if I, I they say enter with market order or CMP or whatever, I click on market order, okay? Then I will select whatever that I want to use. Just drag this leverage. This um, stuff I want to use, is that 15%? Yeah, 10% of my capital. So I go ahead and use 10% of my capital and I want to open a long position. If you want to set take profit, okay, you just click on this TP and SL. So you click on it and then we are going to take long. Okay, you can use this slider to select that if this moved by 150%, you want to take profit. So 150%, it means that BTC needs to go up to around 29, 700 and all of that. So whatever it is, you can say, okay, maybe when it moves up by 10%, let's do 12%, 26,100 will take profit. And then it tells you how much you are going to profit here. You see what I was explaining initially. So it's going to be, we are going to make 11% of the margin we are using. And what is that margin? The margin here is what? This is the margin, $10, all right? So if you move by 10%, we're making 1% of that $10, okay, which is why, it is just that one dollar. But if I use the whole capital here and enter a trade, okay? If I use the whole capital here of 50% of that and enter a trade, if I go ahead and set take profit and I say when it moves by 10%, okay? It will be 10% of that capital that I'm entering, right? Which will be around six dollars and thereabout, okay? So if I do that and I click on confirm, what happened? I go ahead and say, let me open a long position. This time around, it, tell, it tells me that it, I'll be liquidated when it gets to this level, okay? I'm okay with that. I didn't push stop loss. Don't do like that. We'll always push stop loss. So <laughs> I go ahead and click on confirm. And then because I use market order, what happened? The trade has been triggered immediately. Okay. The trade has been triggered immediately. So you can see it, as it continues to move in our favor, this will be green. If it goes against us, it's turned to red. If it moves in our favor, it will be green. If it goes against us, it will turn to red and all of that. Okay. So here you will see the summary. This is the position size, what it costs you. That is the number of BTC you are holding, okay? This is your entry price. This is the current market price. And then this is your liquidation price. If you want to see more details about this, okay, you just click on it and it will tell you the summary. Here you see the margin it costs you, okay? All of this that you entered a trade with and all of that, you see those details there, right? And then if you want to close, you can just click on close by and then you choose whether you want to close the market order or there about. Then while the trade is running, if you want to close half of your position, like partial position, as we always say, what happens? You will now come in here and, you know, set, um, you take profit, you have trailing stop, and then you have close back, all right? So if I come back to the take profit option again, uh, let me just put a stop loss and say, okay, this goes against me by, let's equally do 10%, okay? If it goes against me by 10%, we want to equally close that trade as well, all right? I'll go ahead and confirm that. This will be based on the entire position, okay? This will be based on the entire position. But what if it gets to 10% and want to close half of our position? We can come in here and say partial position, okay? So we'll come in here to the partial position option and then we'll say we want to close what? Half of our position, all right? You just select 50%, the half of our position when the price of Bitcoin increases by 10%, okay? And then, or if it goes against us by minus 10%, you want to close half of that position. You just go ahead and click on confirm, all right? So when BTC gets to that level, automatically this will close half of your position. So if it costs you $60 to enter that, it will close $30, and then you still have $30 in the market and all of that. So you can automatically adjust all of these things. And when it keeps, it gets to that, those prices, automatically those will be closed for you, okay? So basically, yeah, we are making like 0.1% already. So. If this goes in our favor, we'll definitely be making, you know, around six dollars. So to see something, we'll make some profit for ourselves, and then we exit the market, right? So basically, this is what you need. And then for the chatting, you need to come in here and do all of your chatting and all of that. But and normally I don't do this here, so I'll go to Trading View, okay? I'll go to Trading View. If you want to start doing the chatting to take a trade, I'll go to Trading View. This is what Trading View looks like on your app, all right? And the beauty of trading view on your app is that you can use all of this work, all of these indicators, which are not available on the exchanges. Okay, you see why you need trading view. Now, the basic thing for you as a beginner to know when to buy and where to sell 
or where there is a support, where there is a resistance, is to spot that this area. Now, I'm using a particular indicator here, okay, that is showing me that here currently with this particular token, I'm looking at render right now, that there is a, a resistance here, all right? And as you can see, this price has respected that level many times, right? It came here, rejected, it tested it again, rejected, tested it again, rejected, right? And then there is a support down here, right? Which is why it came here, rejected up there. So with this now, if I zoom in right here, you see that it has plotted support and resistance level all over, all right? So we have another one up there, $1.50, $1.60, all of that. So it has plotted all of this on the chart for you. You don't need to do anything. You can use this single indicator to start spotting, but it's not enough to see that market is at a support. There are other you know, confluences that you need to use as confirmation when you want to enter a trade, okay? Which is what we'll be talking about subsequently going forward. That is what we'll be talking about subsequently going forward. But today, I just wanted to show you how to navigate around the buy bid exchange, take trades, and all of that. So you can see that now that the market is going against us, we have what? This is turning to red and all of that. So the percentage is always in the bracket. And then outside the bracket is the amount of money you are making or losing. Okay. So yeah, I just decided to, you know, um, I will stop here because I don't want to keep us too long. So subsequently, we'll now be looking at now. Basically, I want to believe that you understand how to navigate around the buy business change, take long trades, short trades, with everything I've explained. But if not, you can ask your questions and then we'll proceed from there. Okay. And then subsequently, we'll be looking at trading view, looking at technical analysis, looking at some indicators that can aid you to make decisions of buying or selling in the market. All right. So if you have questions, you can you know go ahead and indicate or mute yourself and um, ask your questions, guys. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes. Yes. So, Madam Royal Ambassador. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for the wonderful presentation, sir. God bless you, sir. Hello, You're sir. welcome. Why? Yes, sir. This, uh, my own question is on this leverage. I realize that, I don't know, is it that all coin you can use 100 X? Because I realized that there was one coin I wanted to use then. Maybe I wanted, I wanted to like use 25 X, but it was like 12.5 X is the highest. And some other coin, you see that 25 days, 50 days will be there. Yeah, the leverage is... Is, is the leverage particular to... Is it peculiar to... The leverage is peculiar to some coins or whatever? Yes, it is. It is not all mm -hmm. coins that you will see up to 100x leverage. 100x leverage can be used with major coins like BTC, Ethereum, SRP, ADA, and all of that. But for mm -hmm. instance, I just selected this touch, um, you know, trade. If I go to the leverage option, here, the highest you can go is 25x leverage, okay, right? Okay. Yeah, so there are coins you will select. It will tell you the highest is 12x. Uh, I don't know which mm -hmm. other coin again I will select. I will show you that. If I select ADA, okay, USDT, mm -hmm. the, the highest here is 75. Look at ADA, the highest is 75. So okay. it's not every coin that you see 100x leverage. Some are limited to 12, some are limited to 25, some are limited to 75, some to 100. Okay. Yes. So each coin has its own leverage based on what they had the exchange look at it and the volatility and all of that. Mm. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. All right. You're welcome. Yeah, good evening, you know. Please, there is something that is still confusing me on this by bit based on time frame, what, what is the best time frame for you to use to know where you are going to position a trade? Is it a one hour time frame or 15 minutes time frame for you to know when you are going to enter a trade, whether you are going to go long or short? Well, it all depends on the type of trader that you are. First, you need to discover the type of trader that you are. Which type of trader are you? Are you a swing trader? Are you a long term investor? Are you a day trader? And if you're a day trader, are you a scalper? Okay. These are the things that will determine the time frame that you, you, you will use as your favorite time frame to be entering a trade. Now, if you are an yeah, if you're an investor, okay, that is looking at the long term and the rest, you can be dealing with monthly time frame, weekly time frame, and even the three days, five day daily time frame and all of that. But if you're a swing trader, 
Okay, you can be dealing with the weekly time frame, the daily time frame, and then the four hours time frame. So if you look at the weekly, look at the daily, see all of your you know, areas of interest, your confluences or whatever confirmation you are looking for, you can come down to the four hours time frame and take your trades on the four hours. Now, as a swing trader trading on the four hours time frame, you are limited to the number of trades you can take in a month. The four hours time frame can give you data you know, uh, for like, I uh, think, um, how many days or thereabout. It can give you data and you can be taking trades. If you are going to be trading solely on the four hours, you look at taking at most eight to 10 trades in a month, right? But if okay. you look at the one hour time frame, if you are going to be taking trades on the one hour time frame, you are looking at taking up to 18 trades, 18 to 20 trades in a month, right? And then if yeah. you are just a scalper, you want to be scalping on the 15 minutes time frame, the five minutes time frame, you can base on that. But even if as, as a scalper, you need to look at the overall market. What is the overall trend to determine the, you know, the style of trading you'll be taking? So if you, you can look at one or four hours and do your analysis, then come back to 15 minutes, which is your major time frame. All right. Because on that time frame, highest two, three, four hours, eight hours you are in the market. You don't want to stay more than. 24 hours so the type of trader you are depends determines the type of uh, the time frame that you should be using okay so if you use the daily okay. time the four, one hour time frame yeah be sure that your trade can take up to 24 hours before it gives you whatever result you're looking for okay thanks for the answer okay. you're welcome So, any further questions, guys? Yeah, good evening, my mentor. Yeah, my God, the top, I greet you. Good evening, sir, the mentor of all mentors. <laughs> I... Ah, this position <laughs> big. Good. Hey. I'll 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 I have, if you, if you see this, I'm a mentor, hear you. It's not against our mentor. Mentor. If my mentor yes, hear you. Hey. No, it's not. I, I, I really <laughs> appreciate your presentation. I really understand everything, mm. but uh, we are having difficulties uh, that uh, leverage. Like maybe if you are using five x uh, leverage and to add it to the total margin, that is where I will have problem. To add it to the total margin? Yes. How do you mean to add it to the total margin? Like maybe the 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 the, the, the money in your your account, that is is it to time the leverage maybe you are using five X. Is it to time with the maybe you are having twenty dollars uh, uh, in your account? Is it mm -hmm. to time five times twenty and add it there? No, 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 no. Mm -mm. You can have five dollars in your account and decide yeah. to use hundred X leverage. Okay. okay, you don't add. You, you don't know, multiply you don't. Add, it's not. You know, you don't multiply anything. You can now. The leverage is the amount of money you want to borrow from the exchange. Okay. The more the money, or the higher the leverage, the more the money you are borrowing. And then the higher your risk, equally the higher okay. your take profit levels as well. You understand? Okay. So if you are not okay. sure if it is just this, this, this prediction, just look at this market I'm looking at right now. For instance, if I've used a hundred S leverage, by now maybe I would have gotten liquidated, right? Okay. Because you see that when I place a trade, it first went to profit and then immediately it came back down and it's showing losses. So leverage is not based on the amount of money you have, you can have hundred thousand dollars and still use like two S leverage. You can have five dollars and still use like hundred S leverage. But one thing you should understand is that the more your leverage, the higher the no risk rate. you are taking. Okay? okay, in as much as that high leverage will give you a quick profit and the rest, but the higher the leverage, the higher the risk. So for a start, okay. start with two X leverage. Start with three S okay. leverage. Don't go more than five S leverage. Okay, the okay. way that works is let's assume that I have a hundred and twenty-five dollars here, and I'm using two X leverage. So it means that if this market goes up by ten percent, and I enter a trade with the whole of my twenty-five, one twenty-five, 
So if it goes up by 10%, it means that I'm making 10% of my 125, right? 10% of my 125 dollars if I enter a trade with all the money. For instance, I am entering a trade with cross margin right now, okay? Cross margin, I am risking the whole of the amount I have here. Now, the profit will not be calculated on the whole amount I have here. The profit can only be calculated with the current amount that I have on the margin. So if I click on the trade, this is the margin that I have here, right? Which is what I entered yeah. the trade with. So the profit, if it is 10%, 20%, it will be calculated based on this. But why I use cross is that I am just using this, okay, the cross margin to hold my position, all right? Which is why you see that my liquidation is far away from my entry. So it makes it means that you can stay for as long as you want in the market without you getting liquidated and the rest. But my profit will not be calculated with the whole money because I did not enter the trade with the whole money. Okay. Yes. All right, sir. Uh, it's a, 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 please, uh, you drop your link link to other social media so that we can start following you. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, on the page, yeah. Thank you, all sir. Right. It's all, all right. right. All right. Any any more question? Okay. So yeah, basically. Um, Next time we we'll look at you know trading view on the app, how to use trading view on the app, you know some of these indicators that I use, you know to make some decisions and all of that. Okay, next time that's what we'll be looking at. Hopefully by next weekend we'll look at that. But for today, thank you for being here. Sign up for a buy bid account. I will post the link again on the group. Sign up for a buy bid account, guys. Okay, get account funded, and uh, I think that promo of funding your account with hundred dollar and then getting some percent. I can't really remember. Even the airdrop stuff is still there. You can claim the airdrop and use the free money to be traded. Okay. So thank you for being here this evening and I'll see you guys on Monday during my live show. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, bye -bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Wonderful Sunday. God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.